Hi, everybody. I'm Kerry Cunningham, your host for the Science of B2B podcast. And I currently work at Sixth Sense as the head of research and thought leadership. Now, uh, today I want to introduce a conversation that I had recently with one of my colleagues at Sixth Sense. Her name is Simon Rashid, and she's our SVP of Revenue Analytics. It reminded me of one of my favorite ad campaigns ever. Now, this ad campaign is run by the Irish Development Authority, and then it was run back in the 1980s. The tagline for this campaign was, Missing the Industrial Revolution was the best thing that ever happened to Ireland. I thought that was fascinating. And basically what they're saying is, we're leapfrogging all of the bad stuff that happened as a result of the Industrial Revolution. Well, we've had our own sort of industrial revolution. I think of that as being the digital revolution in marketing that started back in the 2000s, where we started to have websites and forums and email marketing. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So without further ado, I bring you Saima Rashid. What I love about that, uh, that story about the Irish Development Authority is uh, there are so many parallels to what we see in B2B yeah. today. Yeah, and I feel uh, so many companies, so many um, organizations feel like they need to be at a certain level of maturity before right. they can do anything. It seems very daunting, but by waiting and not jumping in and not trying to at least start to solve for some of that, let's be honest, your competitors are right. doing it and they're already moving ahead. And so waiting is almost more dangerous right. than jumping right in. I mean, imagine if uh, Ireland had said, you know what we're going to do? We missed the Industrial Revolution, and it is uh, about 100 years later. But what we'll do is we'll start slow. Uh, we'll put in some factories, <laughs> yeah. we'll build some bolts or whatever it yeah. is, and, and we'll work our way up from there. I don't think that they would have big multinational corporations yeah. headquartered there now. Yeah. Right? And it's the same thing here. You can't afford to wait. Um, there are some other parallels, too, that I, I, I really like in the story. And, and the interesting uh, one for me is about the resentments. They mentioned the resentments. You know, the society was not ready for uh, everything to completely change about how people worked and where they lived and all of that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the thing I think is very hard for people to wrap their heads around is almost nothing that anybody has done over the last 15 years has changed lead conversion rates much at all. Uh, and even in the best organizations, it's still, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, and think of the marketing orgs, myself included, and I run analytics, so the amount of weeks and months we spent optimizing those conversion rates right. and trying to move the needle and doing deep dive analyses with companies like Forrester and Serious Decisions to right. understand where the leak is in the funnel. You're solving a problem, but you're probably not solving the problem that right. needs to be addressed. It's a shift, and I get that a lot of people have built their careers around marketing automation systems that really push you down that yeah. path. But I think it's an opportunity, even for those that you know are in those roles, of let's, let's maybe not focus so much on our lead scoring model and adjusting it, but let's just flip it over and, and look at that full account. I, in my experience, once we made that move in, um, at my previous employer, we were able to generate multiple millions of dollars just by changing our scoring from yeah a individual to the full buying group. Right. It's a change and it's a shift and you have to kind of bring an organization yeah. along with you and retrain folks and re rebuild those SLAs and processes with sales, but yeah. at the end of it, the day you're better for it. There's another place where the resentments uh, concept comes in and it comes in where you talked about with training, skills, people build their careers. I think we can't underestimate yeah. um, how difficult it is for somebody who's literally built their career in B2B and marketing yeah. on being great at Marketo or Eloqua, lead yeah. conversions, they know all the serious decision stuff, all of that. And then you come in and say, you know what? That stuff wasn't right. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think yeah. uh, I, for one, have been super cavalier about that in the yeah. past. Like, okay, let's just, because that's the way I am. Yeah. But that's not the way most people are. Do you have any thoughts on what, what, yeah. what's your experience in? So my experience, and I tend to be a bit more of a risk taker and a bit more yeah. of, if I need to spend my time, uh, let's spend it in the right place. I will say it's almost not even a question anymore. You mm. have to adjust. The industry has moved on. No one in a B2B organization is selling to a person right. unless it's a very small price point, right. right? The vast majority of people listening in are selling to a buying team. And so I think it is 
the responsible thing for even folks who want to continue to build a career in this space is to go where the industry is going. And right. there's still time, by the way, to be ahead of where other companies are, right? This is still a, a a changing landscape, but we see those same principles come up again and again. Yeah. It, it seems to me that the people who were smart enough to be really good at this stuff before are going to be smart enough to be really good at this yeah. stuff. Um, but we have to paint a better picture uh, for those folks of, of why it's going to make a difference and yeah. why they shouldn't be the last people clinging to their MQL machine, you yeah. know. When we pivoted to an account-based approach, number one, Forget business impact. Let's just talk your day-to-day -day and your interactions with your teams and your stakeholders. The language is now the same. Mm. It's not an MQL right. that marketing yeah, is huge. talking about and an opportunity which a sales leader is reviewing in his pipeline yeah. and his forecast calls, right? All of a sudden, no, we're all talking about the same thing. That changes the internal dynamic, mm. number one, and it helps everyone align against that common goal. And then secondly, you will start to see higher um, win rates because you're not talking to one person, you're talking to the four people that you should be talking to. That historical patterns have shown have been common in right. your um, successful deals. You are talking to accounts in the right way and you're optimizing your resources where you're treating early um, awareness, you know, accounts that are educating themselves in a very different way than accounts that are looking at competitors and comparing vendors and price sheets. Right. And so, it changes the external dynamic where you're just smarter and more effective in how you're using your resources, but it just makes it a whole lot easier yeah. um, when you go to work and talk to your stakeholders too. Right, and in a sense, you're really just aligning what marketing is doing to the reality. It's, yeah. it's not even just to sales. I mean, sales has Absolutely. to be aligned to reality because there is no choice for them, yeah. but marketing hasn't been. And I, I keep trying to emphasize that it, it isn't marketing's fault that they haven't been. The tools yeah. and equipment have not been available to yeah. do it properly. They are now, right? Yeah. So, so you got to do that. So there's like this picture that you just painted of being much more effective and successful. And I think everybody wants to be part of that picture. Um, there's also the other side of that, that that I think we need to be cautious about also, which is not overselling um, what results can be and not underselling how much work it is to get there. Yeah. Um, and so there's, you know, one of the big things that I saw in the beginning of predictive analytics period was just overselling the results. Yeah. Um, and Sixth Sense itself was very guilty of this, saying, you know, yeah. no more cold calling. Yeah. Well, actually, probably a lot more cold calling in many sense, but it's going to be much more effective cold yeah. calling, right? But the sales rep is still gonna have to do a ton of work, right? Yeah. Um, any thoughts around what, what that might be? Yeah, so I will say it is daunting, and I mentioned this uh, earlier, but you need to just, dip your toe in, right? Don't go in and overhaul every process. Mm. That will number one, take you six months to a year to <laughs> right. do, and you, but at that point you will have lost time and you won't know what's working. And you got right? many points of failure now. Many, too. many points many. of failure. My, uh, the way we implemented it at PTC was to do it piecemeal, but to measure and iterate within each of those sections. I'll mm. give you an example. Um, we looked at personalization as its own thing mm -hmm. and tested that. A, B tested, you know, against a target list of accounts that we wanted to understand, are we able to get them to stay longer on the website, engage more if the content is more tailored to their industry. Our display ads, you know, that was a second use case and test that we ran. In parallel, by the way, we're not doing this over six months. We did this within the first six weeks wow, wow. of our implementation. But by doing it piecemeal, you are understanding what's working and then you're putting more gas on that fire. Right. You're understanding what's not working and you might pull back resources so that by the time you are ready for a full end-to-end -end campaign, you've got the data and the validation that you need to go off and build that in a more intelligent yeah. way. Yeah, I love that. That's so really start good. somewhere. Even if you're working leads, use the intent scores even just to prioritize those things, yeah. right? So yeah. it, it doesn't happen overnight. It's a change, but if you do it step by step, uh, you, you can get there. Back at uh, Serious Decisions, we even had a couple of customers who their first and only step that they could take was they had, they had an MQL process, especially if they had ABM, this was effective. If they have a set of accounts that they're really focused on, um, just run a report every week that shows the sales reps how many people from those accounts have been to their website yeah. so that they can use that simple thing to prioritize their efforts. Yeah. And that can make a huge difference. And yeah. I think also develop a relationship with sales like, oh, geez, they're doing something that's like really yeah. helpful and, and, and useful. Yeah, alerts. You know, yeah. maybe let's not bombard them, to your point, right? A weekly list, a weekly alert. Or if they, you know, it, with sellers, I've noticed the second you show them something's working, 
they're like, okay, I want more now. And so then you up it, right? Then you create the demand for this very organically versus pushing this from marketing to a sales right. org. Yeah, I love that. Um, then another uh, company that got a, a Program of the Year award as well, uh, like the one that you guys got. Um, what they did was they just started grouping uh, leads. So th yeah. they, st they started with their MQL process that they already had, but every time they sent an MQL, uh, to somebody, they automated the process of looking to see if there were other leads that had yeah. come from that organization either right before or right after. Uh, yeah. And then they just sent them all together, yeah. right? And they had them work on the opportunity object, yeah. now go work this. And that, that team doubled their productivity, that, uh, there that you SDR go. team. There yeah. you go. And I will say we could, and just in that example specifically, you can take some of the good things that did come out of a lead-based approach mm -hmm. and apply them to the account-based, right? People got really good at SLAs right. and process totally. and inspection against those SLAs. Apply them to the account now, right? We do this at Six Cents. We have certain number of minutes within which you need to follow yeah. up on an account. We have certain number of contacts within that account That's that you need to one. reach out to. <laughs> That's the most important right? one. Right, and so those things, they don't go away. You're just right. pointing them in a different direction. Yeah. So, so you've all got is the discipline, you, you're, yeah. you're in shape, yeah. but now you gotta play a little different yeah. sport, right? You gotta use, uh, use your muscles a little bit differently. Yeah. yeah, so I think that's all really good, that's all really true, and that helps organizations see what the steps are along yeah. the pathway. Don't have to do it all at once, but good Lord, start doing start. it. <laughs> you know, start. start doing something. Just start, jump in. Um, I think I have a slide somewhere that says, you know, when I talk about our program of the year award, I'm like, just start by starting. Yeah. Honestly, you're losing more by doing nothing. Yeah. Um, cool, anything else you want to uh, bring to this conversation? I think we're good, yeah. thank you. That was great, thanks, yeah. this was a lot of fun. <laughs> thanks, Gary.